So in this session, we're going to discuss the economic production lot size model, sometimes called the batch production model, sometimes called the batch delivery model. Now here uh, in this discussion, we're going to uh, not differentiate too much between the use of the word production or delivery because uh, in our discussion here, they are basically uh, just different words for the same kind of inventory activity. Now, uh, basically, we are going to move back to use the EOQ model again. Now we appreciate why EOQ model is so important. So we're going to start out with the EOQ model with one uh, exception. Uh, we do not have discount, right? So it's a base EOQ, but the exception has got to do with um, the delivery. What, what's so special about that? Now, earlier on in our discussion about EOQ, we were drawing triangles. And when we drew triangles, the idea is that um, when we order quantity Q tires, uh, after lead time days, we will receive the Q tires. And so our inventory level spiked up from zero all the way to Q. So that makes sense, except one thing. When Q is small, it makes sense, uh, both in, on theory and also in real life. But when Q is large, like 6,000 tires, this spike uh, might not be so realistic because what this means in real life is that we get 6,000 tires uh, immediately in a flash within almost no time, not even a day. All right, that, that is uh, too crude uh, an approximation to say that, well, it will take uh, five days to load up your warehouse, and that is uh, as good as no time. That, that is hard to say, right? So uh, what is the right thing to, to draw instead when we take, you know, some time, significant amount of time rather than no time, is to draw a slanted triangle in order for us to deliver Q. Okay, yeah, because uh, it will take some time. That is, uh, as the longer it takes, the, the more slanted the left uh, side of the triangle should be, right? And at the same time, uh, as we take more time, we also will be, will be uh, selling in those days. So there are, there are actually uh, two activities going on. We're trying to fill up the warehouse uh, every day but every day we are also depleting the warehouse uh, by d right the daily demand and so the idea is uh, or the question is given these two activities we are filling and we are depleting at the same time what is the best order quantity again such that our total cost uh, experience is the lowest right so that is the starting point of our discussion now of course we need to make further assumptions that our production rate, that is uh, the rate at which the tires are delivered to us, whether it is produced by the factory and delivered to us, or they are actually sent by the supplier from their warehouse, doesn't really matter, right? So, so that's why the model is called production or delivery, you know, to us uh, as, as the buyer of these uh, items from our supplier, it really doesn't matter. Now, the delivery rate, P has to be larger than the consumption rate D. Okay, so that, that is, of course, a, a must. Um, but let me switch over to our writing mode here so that we can uh, sort of draw a little bit um, of diagrams here. So the idea is um, we have time on the x-axis. Right, and we ordered Q tires. Now, uh, it will take some time. It will take non-zero time. So let's say it will take uh, T days. Okay, so suppose T days is uh, you know suppose T days. Uh, let's give an example, t equals to 3 days. 
and just you know just so that we we have some numbers to work on uh, we do we do order a lot of tires six thousand tires okay example so uh, we also recall that our daily all right consumption was 20 tires per day notice that i used small d that's our daily demand rate and uh, we therefore can get a daily production rate p not the capital p used in the slide but small p small p will be um, the annual delivery and the total delivery uh, so 6000 divided by 3 right or rather we should be writing q divided by t All right so in our example this would give us 2000 tires per day that's a lot but at least it's not unreasonably large as large as 6000 okay so what are the connections yeah uh, what we are trying to do is to determine the maximum inventory level m because once we can decide or determine a formula a, a quantity for the height of it right then we are almost done because uh, if we redo the exercise to calculate the average inventory level that would give us m over 2 so so long as we know the height of the triangle we can get a very good formula for the average inventory level for the inventory cycle that means the for the triangle by just dividing the maximum height of the triangle by 2 that will give us the average inventory level when we have the average inventory level we can multiply by h to get the holding cost and then the whole uh, question about what is the best order quantity will be solved okay so uh, what can we do now well to get m let's understand this uh, in t days right in t days we should have delivered uh, daily pro daily production rate daily delivery rate of p and uh, we have t days to produce them then also in t days we have uh, consumed that is we have sold daily demand times t to our customers right so m the maximum inventory level will be after t days right will be the leftover of pt minus dt isn't it yeah because that's the difference because without the demand then it will have been much steeper all right uh, and we can factor out t here to get p minus d which is essentially a constant now t here uh, we have earlier on a relationship between p t and q so so actually we just swap them and get uh, t is equal to q over p so now we can write this as q over p times p minus d and we can therefore uh, obtain this factor d over p now notice that this ratio is daily demand over daily production rates which is probably sometimes more convenient in solving problem than annual demand divided by annual production rate although it, the ratio is the same because we are assuming everything is a constant okay so uh, this relationship is going to help us to solve um, to substitute everything uh, it substitute into our formulas right and we can now switch back to our slide right? as discussed before once we know the maximum height of the inventory cycle we know the average inventory uh, level and it's looking something like this okay so the maximum inventory level is going to be q times the this ratio 1 minus d over p and average inventory level is simply m divided by 2 right so we get that and uh, we just multiply by h to get the annual holding cost the 
setup cost is the same. If we like, we can differentiate it again to set to zero and obtain the optimal production lot size. So this is going to be 2ds over h with this little extra factor below. Okay. Now uh, let's let's do a little check on the formula to appreciate uh, what this formula is telling us. Yeah. Now um, let's switch back to writing mode. Okay, so uh, we get the so-called best order quantity is going to be square root of 2ds over h times 1 minus d over p. I have changed it to small letters, which is basically equivalent. Now, as we deliver all right, at higher and higher rates, that is, every day we deliver more. What that means is that uh, the triangle, right, we have more and more left over every day, and so the, the gradient of the left leg of the triangle will be steeper and steeper and steeper, isn't it? So, as P goes to infinity, that is, if we keep on increasing the rate of delivery until you know, it is, it is madly fast. If we can deliver infinite number of tires uh, in no time, then what the Q formula tells us is that, um, first of all, as P goes to infinity, the ratio D over P goes to zero, and one minus something that goes to zero is one, and so we get e Q becoming, or, or moving closer to uh, 2DS over H which we recognize as the EOQ formula, right? So in many sense, this formula, the batch production uh, formula, is an extension of the EOQ formula, or rather it generalizes the EOQ formula so that it doesn't have to be a right angle triangle. It can be a slanted triangle by taking more time to deliver the same order quantity, while at the same time for each day that we deliver, we are also consuming at the same time. So, so it is a very nice extension that takes into account two activities, production and consumption simultaneously, right? Backing off each other. Okay, so as usual, we need to calculate the cost and the cost uh, formula is here. Notice one thing as compared to the previous uh, discount model, there is no addition of the purchase cost. So do not include the purchase cost. So this total cost, annual total cost, is, is uh, the, the, the formula changes and the meaning changes as we change the inventory model being discussed. So be very, very careful and aware of that. Here's an example uh, about television manufacturing company. So uh, they also make their own speakers and currently the daily demand rate, our little d, right, is 1,000 speakers. They also give you daily production rate, 3,000 speakers. Notice that the daily production is more than the daily demand. That is an important quite criteria. So currently they do that and each production produces 30,000 speakers. So that is our order quantity. So here they phrase it as production run, batch run, batch production. But that's our order quantity over a period of 10 working days right and so on and so forth right so they give the holding cost and the setup cost so maximum inventory level and so on so they calculated the total cost the total cost is 136,000 can we do better right so let's calculate the optimal order quantity in the presence of a uh, finite production rate so in this case we substitute the quantities into the formula and get 50,000. In other words, the factory should be manufacturing uh, each batch run at 50,000 units rather than 30,000 units. So substituting into the total cost calculations, we get $120,000. And that just means that uh, without doing anything, uh, diff we, just, we just have a different batch quantity production, right? And uh, we immediately experience a savings of sixteen one six thousand dollars without borrowing money, without investment, you know, retraining, whatever. Just just try to get a different batch number will do.
So, so this savings 